Hey guys, I'm Miranda here. Welcome out to the range. Uh, today I'm going to do some pistol work and initially I was just going to come out here and just do some work on my own. Um, but I realized that this is a great opportunity to share with some uh, share some information with you guys. Um, you're always hearing me talking about dry fire, dry fire, dry fire. Well, dry fire takes time. So um, I figured I would run the camera and, um, and you guys can just see what a regular training session looks like. It's boring. Um, all right, guys, so I, I literally just got here, okay? So I grab my gun, unload it, and make sure there's no ammunition on my person. And um, I put on my protective equipment because once I do this, once I finish my dry fire reps, I immediately go into live fire. Um, and in fact, well, you'll see the process. So basically what I do is I set up on the barrier, and I want to set up in such a fashion that I'm, the reason I'm close um, even though you typically don't want to be close, you want to work barriers from like 6, 10, 12 feet if you can. But this is not a scenario. People, people get this wrong all the time. This is not a scenario. This is a skill drill. And what this barrier is doing for me is it's forcing me to find that position where the gun should be about right there. Where the gun can come up. With the, well, let me put it this way. Actually, I'll finish the thought. The reason I want the position here is I can still, um, I'm still in a position where my gun is not protruding past that barrier, which is a potential grabbing issue. And like I said just a moment ago, this is not a scenario, but whenever possible, I want to practice responsibly if I can. So I try not to allow my muzzle to move past the edge of the barrier that I'm working with. Um, Oh, and, uh, and the other reason that I'm close to this is having the barrier forces you to keep track of getting the gun up and forward as opposed to, um, what's that term? It's um, um, uh, digging the furrow, you know, plowing. Some people will plow their gun up, and if you're plowing, you know, you're going to end up poking your gun into the barrier that you're behind. And also, while the barrier is not a problem for this, you also want to you also want to inhibit this type of a thing going on. So, the barrier is a reminder of good body mechanics of getting the gun up and onto the target. And I have my shot timer set up. And by the way, this is the other reason that I'm wearing hair protection. The the packed club timer twos are so ridiculously loud, which is a good thing. That um, they will they'll give you a here. That's loud. So, uh, two second par, and um, basically I set up for the shot, and I get into the fighting stance. The fighting stance is feet, shoulders, well not really shoulders with the part, feet uh, very wide, like the base of a pyramid. I don't really care if one leg is in front of the other, guys, pick. It doesn't matter, because wherever your fighting stance finds you is where it's going to find you. And what the fighting stance is about is you're walking along, all of a sudden a dude comes up on you and you back up. Or you back up. Whatever foot ends up in front is the foot that ends up in front. This is why the fighting stance, you really should not spend a whole lot of time trying to find a fighting stance because there are multiple fighting stances. So I get in the fighting stance, hands in the defensive posture. This guy's seven yards away. And I should have, when I break that shot, I should cleanly see my front sight, which I did. And the front sight was right there. And then I pause and then bring the gun in. And then if I'm going to do the follow through, I do the follow through. But typically, if I'm just doing dry fire, it's just the up, the click. Obviously, there's no bang for the, for the club timer to register. So what I'm after with this is... making sure that the gun comes up and I have a solid click before I hear beep, which is why I'm working off of two seconds. I know I'm gonna get this done well inside of two seconds. I just wanna make sure that I am getting a clear indicator that I got it done in two seconds. Think about it. Drawing from cover from behind um, concealment, cover or concealment, seven yards, headshot, that's not too shabby. You know, yeah, that was close. That one was very, very close. Man, that was off. 
that was way off on his on his right ear. That's more like it. That was about center. That one was slow, but the shot was on. Oh, <laughs> that one was bad. That was bad, bad, bad. A lot of you don't think that dry fire matters. Trust me, dry fire really does matter. Dry fire practice matters because what I'm finding as, I, as I'm coming up, see it's not even doing it now, there it is. There. And I'm sometimes still pulling while I'm reaching for the gun and I'm partially catching the edge of the shirt. So this is why this is important to do. That one was better. That one was a lot better, guy. Because I was thinking about, honestly, I don't know what I was thinking about there, but I wasn't thinking about all this. The other thing that I have found in the last, um, well, probably about in the last year, because of, because of COVID, I've spent more time in front of my computer communicating with people, watching things and learning, trying to keep up with what's going on in America. Oh, I did it now. Uh, shut up. I've spent a lot of time in front of my computer and it has really jacked up my vision. I had to go see my doctor and we had to kind of tweak my vision a little bit so I'm having to relearn what it is that my eyes are seeing as opposed to what it is that I want them to see. That's the reality of getting older. A lot of you have communicated with me and, you, and you've told me how much you appreciate the realism that I bring to these videos. Guys, it's the only way I'm going to do this. One of the reasons I'm out here today is because last night I released a video called um, You're Going to Get Muzzled So Get Over It or something like that. And so many people tossed so much hatred in my face on that one that I was like, whoa, so happy place go somewhere nice with fresh air and sunshine and by the way thank you god for staving the rain off because it was raining when i got here and now thank you lord i appreciate that he knows that i needed this um uh, i come out here sometimes because i have to just blow off some steam i have to get some fresh air and sunshine because i keep getting punched in the nose because of the great big sin of sharing truth and you know what I'm not the only one in America who's getting beaten down because I'm sharing truth. Get over it, lefties. I'm sharing truth. There are a lot of commentary. There's a lot of commentary being made by people who I'm fairly certain are actually bots. Their channels are empty. There's nothing there. And that, I'm, I'm thinking some of these people that are making these comments are actually bots that are there there are trolls that are digital trolls that are there to just to just push those buttons and I keep asking all y'all that make comments in defense of me man I don't need your defense I appreciate it but I don't need your defense trust me these people are not worth tangling with and even and by the way even if it is a real person I, I guess I should back up and say this even if it is a real person they're not worth tangling with a person convinced against their will is of the same opinion still. It's a thing that would be known as an idiom. It's an idiom that I learned years ago, and it makes so much sense. A person convinced against their will is of the same opinion still. It doesn't matter if you show polished, shiny truth to a moron. They're not going to accept it. Moron and or evil person with an evil agenda. Okay? We are fighting, guys, we are fighting the agenda right here, right now, going on in America, is the same agenda that everybody else on the planet has been dealing with, but now, wake up America, now we're dealing with it too. The lefties are here, evil is here. And remember, we now are squarely in a position where there is no longer the Democrat Party or the Republican Party, where it is no longer the left or the right. It is now good versus evil, and you're the prize. You are the prize. 
the majesty and glory of God's creation, which is mankind, is being put to shame and degradation by the devil. Good versus evil. God versus the devil. That's all this is. Okay, that's all this is. I have to constantly repeat that to myself. All of the woes that America is going through are laid out in prophecy. We were warned about this in God's word. We knew this was coming. You know, we often ask ourselves, how did mankind not see that Jesus Christ was the Messiah? How did they not get it? Because even though the scriptures were there, mankind is very, very skillful at ignoring truth when it's right there in front of you. Are you actually going to believe your lying eyes, the devil says? That's why we are where we are. And I have to keep reminding myself of that. This is nothing but a temporal world. Oh, that was horrible. Oh, Dave Spaulding, if you're watching, I know you saw that grip. That was beyond horrible. Man, that was just... That was better, but it's slow. That's better. All right. Time to go live. You know what? I'll address that because I know that some of y'all are, are like, what did he just do? All right. Uh, gun was locked open. Um, I put the mag in. Yeah, put the mag in and with the index finger sent the slide home and then did that with my thumb and then put it in the holster. Now I know someone's going to say, yeah, but. Okay, shh. Your yeah, but is irrelevant because in 65 classes that I've done, not to mention thousands of hours out here on my own, I have proven once and for all that, actually I'll give you one single incident that will prove it. Uh, what the issue is, some people are, are griping because the loaded chamber indicator that is part of a Glock, which is that little tab that sticks out on the extractor, could potentially be held in an up position by a bit of gravel or, 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 or silt or crud or whatever. Yeah, okay, potentially. Here is what this gun has actually been through. Intentionally being dropped in the dirt by an instructor. Unload your weapon. I'm sorry, I said dirt, I meant mud. Unload your weapon, put the mag, loaded mag back in, drop it in the mud. And the instructor comes by and steps on everybody's gun and just drives it into the mud. Mud went, it just expressed itself through every single crevice that you can see on this gun. Mud expressed itself into the Glock. Okay? Didn't particularly concern me, it's a Glock. I know it can take it. I brought the gun up, I pulled the trigger, the gun fired once, I went to pull the trigger again, and even in cycle I could tell the gun was crunchy. The gun kind of did a half, a half concerted effort <laughs> to try to extract and, and get back in battery, and it didn't. So I did a tap and a rack, and then it was really boogered up, right? Well, guess what? I took that moment in time to go like this, to slide right past the, uh, the loaded chamber indicator, and you know what I found? The loaded chamber indicator was down, meaning it was flush against the slide. It wasn't sticking up. Because, by the way, guys, uh, the rounds, there was so much junk in the gun, the gun just was not working properly. It didn't want to, it didn't want to strip a, a round out. It didn't really want to get it into battery. It was, it was trying to work past all that Alabama yuck that was in the gun. And it couldn't do it. But the loaded chamber indicator was not stuck in an up position. It was actually down where it's supposed to be. So, worst case scenario, it actually had stopped up a Glock. Okay, the gun wasn't even running anymore, but the loaded chamber indicator was still working. So that's why I can say to you with like damn near 100% certainty that I know that the loaded chamber indicator works each and every time, which is why, which is why in an effort, in an effort to minimize, that was a really weird sound through my digital hearing pro, um, which is why I minimize motion. I load, slide goes forward. I sweep past the loaded chamber indicator. You'll, you'll see this many times in my videos. I'll see if I can find some. In my videos when I'm doing different things, if I do a reload, you'll actually see me do a, a reload and then quickly sweep and put it in there and, I'm, and I'll continue talking to the camera. Okay, now first live round after all the dry firing.
think that was dead center of the head. 1.86, cool. Now I can tell you from past experience, when I've come out here, driven up, grabbed my crap, come out here, boom, and laid it down live fire, I have either missed that target completely or hit down near the word handgun. You can tell my student was out here because she, she shot the crap out of the, she had her first round that day, by the way, went dead center of the head. And as we kind of progressed on through the afternoon, she was hitting just above the H. She was killing just above the O. And I was like, slow down, slow down. But she oh, overall, she did really well. No, yeah, that's too far. Yeah, that's, that's a little bit too far. Should be right there. And by the way, that one was slightly over. That, that was 2.01, so that was over. That was low, but it was here, and that's still a fight ender. 1.83. You know what? 1.89. I'm going to paint that target because I can't really tell where my hits are. We're going to start over. When you're talking target paint, cheap is always best. You'll notice the wind is blowing this way, by the way, so that I'm not getting it on my watch or on my clothing or on my shooting glasses. When you're talking target paint, cheap is best. And here's why. Cheap paint is the only paint that allows you to do what I just did there, which is invert the can and clear out the straw. Um, I was buying, I was originally buying this stuff and was aggravated with how runny it was. So I went to Rust-Oleum paint, which really truly does have four times the coverage. But the problem is the stuff will, will work when the can is inverted so I can never clear it out. So what was happening was that paint is so high quality that it was actually clogging the straw in the nozzle. So I was consistently only being able to get a third, a third of the product out. And these are, I think they're like a, a buck 20 something at Walmart. And those are like four something. So what I was finding was for the same amount of money, I was able to buy way more paint and get more usable paint than I was out of one can of Rust-Oleum. So I went back to the cheap stuff. You know what? It does just fine. All right, now we got something to work with. Mm, that was low. That would be about, about right there, maybe about here. Still a fight stopper. Guys, you've heard me say this before, but for those of you that are new that have just stumbled on this video, the human body is pretty much a machine like any other machine. It works off hydraulic, pneumatic, electrical. The command center that runs the machinery is up here. How do we disrupt the command center from the machinery? Because this is what, this is what comes up with the evil thought, the mind. And the hands fulfill that evil thought, right? So how do we disconnect the mind from the hands? If we can't disconnect it, let's at least disrupt it. And how do we do that? Hydraulic, electrical, pneumatic. Hydraulic is going to be blood, jugular carotid. Uh, pneumatic is going to be breathing, trachea right down the middle. And um, electrical. Yeah, hydraulic, pneumatic, electrical is going to be brainstem, also dead center. Anything in this window, any hit inside of this window is going to disrupt. Certain shots inside of this window will absolutely instantly kill. But any hit, listen to what I said, any hit inside of this window is going to 100% disrupt. And all I'm trying to do is disrupt this evil person's behavior so I can stop them and hightail it and get it out of there. Remember guys, I'm not a cop. I want to disrupt so I can break contact and split. That's it. So glad I'm not a cop anymore. Man, that was horrible. Yeah, 2.05. I pointed the gun and didn't even see my front side post. All I saw was, was, yeah, was that. So that tells me that I was, let's see here. Yeah, so I was low and right. By the way, guys, I'm doing this, every time I do this, it's both eyes open. I'm not squinting. And I'm, the other thing that I'm doing here is I'm practicing the flash sight picture. At seven yards, you have only enough time for the good enough uh, shot. I have videos on this stuff. 
So it's up, clear the barrier, and get the proper grip on the gun. Press it out, I'm sorry, push it out, press, push, yank, whatever, right in front of me. Find my side picture, and I think I was here. In fact, you know what, I'm gonna, I'm gonna squeeze off the round um, about where I was. Yeah, I wanted to show you where I was. That went over there somewhere. Don't know where, but it went over there somewhere. So what I'm after is that. I want that central hit, which means I'm gonna have to take a brief moment in time, but guess what? Guess what I have on my side? This. Imagine that this is solid all the way in this direction, and this is not that chunks of a wall, or, or you know, the tall side of a Suburban. You know, consider this a straight line all the way down. I'm using something to obfuscate that person's ability to see me. That's all this is. That's low. That was low and ugly and off time. <laughs> see what happened? The casing bounced off something, probably the back of the rear sight and went forward. There's a lot of ammo that's been kind of entering the country now for quite some time and it's, eh, it's hinky on its quality. But look, all those hits, every last one of those hits is still a keeper. Because remember, all those are still central to this area right here. That was low. That was like, that was like yank kind of low. Oh, here's, hang on. Here's another thing that I wanted to show you guys. Um, when you're doing this, time is the big issue. The, the time issue is getting your hands from here down to here, cover garment up, handgun up, joining the two hands together, finding the front side post, and getting that shot. You're eating a lot of time in this motion, which is why some of the instructors that I've trained with that are into like, you know, high speed shooty fast, they begin, they begin with their support hand like, like this, and their thumb, and either, either they, they're running off of the, hey man, I'm somebody, and these are all my disciples. So, I'm not your disciple. I'm here to learn, and if you're here to show off for me, because really, because like, so, this is how you're gonna begin your fight? Think about it, please. Okay, I am gonna go real world here on this, all right? Think about what we're saying here. Whether this be a parking lot and some dude just pops up on you. Whether this be uh, whatever the scenario is, do you actually perceive yourself getting into a verbal, physical firearm altercation and beginning it here? I don't. Maybe you do, but I don't. And if you do, great, but I don't because Hey man, look, I'm, you know, I'm cool, I'm cool. Hope, you know what, I'm out. It's this, it's a, hey, listen, guys, this is not how any regular minded person begins a fight. This is all kinds of fast because this eats, this, this takes a lot of time out of that equation for you. Cover garment has completely been cleared now with this very minute motion. Look, this is ideal. If you absolutely see that problem coming, oh, hell yeah. Guys, what do you think this stance is about? Let's say that you're the bad guy and I'm the cop. This is the way I stood when I was a police officer. My left eye is targeting you, but my sidearm is here because I'm a lefty. So I'm actually bladed off of you. My sidearm is away from you, and I'm in the interview stance. Notice that I'm not doing this or this. I'm doing this. My shooting hand is over my support hand. My support hand is out of the way. And at a moment's notice, my shooting, my shooting hand can immediately go to my sidearm, unlock the holster, weapon can come up, and I can begin shooting from here, and I've trained for it. And then I can backpedal and shoot while doing this. So yes, to the police officer who sees trouble coming long before it gets there, this is our stance as cops. But to the private citizen who is just walking along, look, as a private citizen, here's a little legal, illegal for you. As a private citizen, if you see trouble, split. Now, of course, 
If that trouble has one of your loved ones in their hands, well then it's on, isn't it? If someone is holding my wife or my daughter, daughter is one of, then obviously I'm wading into that. I have no choice, I have to. But if I see trouble, I'm out. I don't, I don't care. I don't care what thing of mine that they have, but if it is a person of mine, one of my loved ones, that's different than a car or a belonging. If I see trouble, I'm out, which is why my fight is not gonna begin here or, you know, this thing. It's gonna be fight, the, the trouble has suddenly come up on me. Hey, 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 back up, man, back up. Listen, I'm sorry, just let me go. And, I, and the whole time I'm backing out and talking, backing out and talking. I'm creating distance. I'm creating as much room as I can. So if I have to, then I can jink and I can grab that gun and I can do something. That's what this fighting stance is about. A lot of you that are new to this industry, remember, 9 to 10 million new gun owners have entered the industry. A lot of you have never even seen this stuff because a lot of you have never, and by the way, well, a lot of you have never had training. I want to finish that thought. And a lot of people who think they're gun people have never had training. And they think they know something based on YouTube, based on the shooty channels. Oh, no. I'm not even, I'm not even expending that round. That was horrible. That was horrible. This is how the gun, I think it was like that. This is how the gun ended up in my hand. You see that? At 59 cents a round, this ain't worth it. I'm sorry. 59 cents a round is the actual cost. Get it into your shopping cart, then shipping gets added, $20 for a case of 1000 if you can find it. Then shipping insurance, 100 something odd bucks. So now you're talking 70 something, right? It's not worth expending that round, is it? No. You know, same thing. Same thing. Fix the grip. Mm, that's off. Remember, guys, this is not a this is not a running race where a baton has been handed to me and it's incumbent upon me to finish the race, no matter how poorly I finish the race. This is me on the range with a target, and this is very subjective. You guys don't know what my hands are feeling, but I know what I'm feeling as I'm doing this. And if my grip is wrong, I'm not. In, I'm not. This is not an investment. This is a wasted round because at the level of experience and training that I have to, to just launch that round, that's a wasted round. I know where that round's gonna go and it's gonna go not where I want it to be. Yeah, better, but still slightly off. I had plenty of time, 1.79, had plenty of time, but I threw it away. That was better because the other times I haven't seen a clear enough sight picture to put me on the head. Remember guys, I'm trying to hit a head from 21 feet. That thing is an exact one-to-one -one representation of the human body. So what you're seeing on that camera, for real, that's what a person would look like at 21 feet. That's why I like these targets because they are an exact one-to-one -one representation of the human body. All right, from here, that target down there is, I don't know, 60 yards maybe? And from here, definitely, I'm going to want to squint. From here, that looks like looks like um, like he's holding uh, maybe a volleyball. The front dot of of, uh, of my Proctor Y notch sights looks like the size of a volleyball on the middle of his chest. So yeah. So I'm not going to get. I'm not going to get a beautiful side picture, but remember, that's 60 yards. Am I actually intending on trading rounds with a guy from 60 yards? Only if I absolutely have to. While my loved ones go Foom, in that direction. Oh. Man, I threw that one away. Wow, that's abysmal. That's, that's... This is the reality of training, guys. I'm not going to lie to you. This is the reality of training. Oh, look at that. Much better. 2.01. But I hit. Ow. 
Now he hit me. Oh, no, 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 no. That literally came out like, that came out like that. Heck yeah! About time, 1.90, and it was in his right eye. Ow! You get hit a lot when you're doing this. It is what it is. Uh-uh. Nope. That was not a keeper. Point one seven. Abysmal, abysmal, abysmal. One point eight five. Nope. Nope, 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 nope. No. No. Yeah. 2.06. You know, guys, it is what it is. That is the reality of training right there. You come out here, you put in the work, you do the reps, begin with dry fire, and you'll have a better training session and you won't blow off a lot of, uh, a lot of ammunition because if you're doing the work properly, instead of blowing off ammo, you're investing ammo and there's a difference. Um, I think I pretty much said everything I needed to say in this video. Um, questions or comments, leave them below. I am doing my best to answer them. There are so many stupid people that have come out of the woodwork to punch me in the nose. So many hate mongers out there, man. Y'all are, you know what? Now I understand what Grand Thumb says when he says, the comment section is out of control. He's right. The comment section is out of control. <laughs> As always, I thank you guys for watching. God bless you all. Get those I almost said comments. Get those guns out and practice. Have a good one.